everybody, Terry Gigi here. Today I wanted to talk to you about um, getting things done, being motivated to get things done, and I thought I would give you a few tips and tricks that I use when I need to get a project done and I'm just dreading it, dreading it. Sometimes you just have to jump right in. And sometimes, depending on the project or the thing you're trying to do, it's better to do some prep work the day before or whatever before you start so that when you get up, you just get going. So I'm gonna talk about that today and I'm gonna relate some of it to how do I get a book written? Because I'm in the middle of doing a second book as I shared with y'all and um, I thought I would share with you how I get it done. Because it sounds pretty daunting to write a book and it is, but um, yeah, how do I do it? Depending on the project, if it's something that you just need to do and it doesn't require any special tools or preparation or anything, just do it. Just do it. Like the other day, I cleaned out one little thing in my kitchen and I just kept going. So, so much, as you know, of getting things done is just starting. So if there's, if it's no big deal, it's just something you're, you're avoiding, just go ahead and do it. Get started. Even if it's uh, something like like cleaning out a junk drawer, it seems so like such a big deal to some people. Um, and usually, 99% of the time, it's not as bad as you think. But the other thing you can do is just set a timer for 10 minutes and just say, okay, I'm just going to spend 10 minutes in this junk drawer. I'm just going to spend uh, 10 minutes straightening up and cleaning this bathroom. I guarantee you, if you start, you'll finish. You'll go all the way and finish it. Because for some reason with human beings, starting is the hardest part. And for me, I think it's just being lazy and just always finding other things more interesting to do is mainly the whole thing. So if it's something simple, just go for it. Don't, if you need to organize something, don't spend all your time buying things to organize with, like containers and different things like that. Like the other day I was doing my, um, pantry. And I thought, oh, I need to run down and get all these containers first. Well, I just opened up my pantry and I just started doing it. You know, I just started doing it. And then I realized I don't even want those containers. You know, I was looking at my little boxes of crackers like I did this last night too. I was looking at my boxes of crackers, you know, because I haven't been here in three weeks. I couldn't remember what was in the box. You know, is there this many sociables in the box or this many sociables in the box and whatever. But I started thinking, Okay, if I have a container for sociables, what if I buy wheat thins and I have a little bit of sociables left? Can I not open the wheat thins? And then you have a, a pretty container of sociables and a box of wheat thins. You've, you've, you've screwed up your whole thing. I can't live like that where I'm trying to buy for my containers. I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but I don't get it. I don't know how people have these perfect pantries and things because a pantry is something you're in and out of every single day every single day so anyway i don't know how i got off on that but um just do it and then once you've decluttered it and got it straight a you might not want the containers or b you might think man i can do the container thing i'm, I'm going to get mine to look like that because i think that's my lifestyle or that's how i want to do it so do it right but you still have to start and do the prep work to know what containers you need. So sometimes you just do it and then you think, oh, I have a part two. I'm going to do this some more. I'm going to go another step. And sometimes you have to prep for the project you want to do. Like um, if you're going to paint a room. Well, you can't just get up one day and paint a room. You have to pick the color and you have to make sure you have all the stuff. So do all that the day before or the week before you're going to paint the room. Otherwise, if you're like me, by noon of doing all the prep, you're not, who even wants to paint by that time? Do it all the day before. And then when you wake up, you're ready to go. Also, also, this is kind of a side note, but I think you need to be, when you're doing a project around the house, um, it's best to be in comfy clothes. And for me, as much as I've tried to write 
just get up and write first thing in the morning when I'm still in my pajamas or something. It just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like, it just feels like I'm half trying or something. So I always get dressed. I have my hair and makeup is almost always done to some extent. Like right now it's wet, but um, you know, I feel like I could get to work right now. So comfy clothes and feeling good about how you look or even if it's like painting clothes, you know, you don't have to look like a slob. You can look a little cuter than, well, I shouldn't say that because the other day I looked like a slob when I was painting, but I did have an apron on, a cute apron, which really uh, helped out a lot. We've got prep work either the day, the day before. Yeah, the day before you can do prep work. Now for me, when I was writing Marie Antoinette, I had so much research to do. And I did a lot of that research as I wrote. It would have been so much better if I had really gotten all the research done beforehand and had it in my brain. But it was too many dates and too many things, so that wouldn't have worked anyway. Sometimes, too, you do so much prep work that you never do the project. You go buy all of your scrapbooking supplies and you never make the scrapbook. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes buying supplies makes people think they've done the the, the, the thing and it's not you know so just keep your mind focused on what you're doing and what's the best way to accomplish it my prep work is I did on this book I'm writing right now I sketched out I wrote like you're supposed to do this all dramatically and and have an outline and all that so far that's not how I operate I might do that in the future though but um I wrote things out about each character, like where they came from, you know, there's four main characters. So I wrote what their name is, their family, where they came from, where they lived, how their uh, childhood was briefly and all that. So I had that in my mind so that as I wrote about each of them, I could, it would make some sense, right? I, and I keep drinking this y'all only because it's hot and so yummy that I don't want it to get cold. And I always have my notebook with me with all this, these scraps and, and different, I don't even know what's in here, just different things about, um, like, like this would be something motivating. Um, explore the Florida Keys. I mean, that, that's motivating for me because the book takes place in the Florida Keys. So I might put that out while I'm writing or something like that. So all that kind of stuff is in my notebook that I keep with me. A lot of times I will set a timer to write for one hour, period. That's all I'm going to make myself do. You know, most of the time I'll end up writing for two to three hours. Um, but creative writing is difficult because you're making, for me, I'm making the story up as I go, which is just probably not good. But, you know, it's all up to you on how you approach your project. Say your project is, you know, redecorating. Well, Let's see, um, like, like wanting to get some new things in your, in your house. Take the old things out that you don't like. Like I'm looking over here, okay, take that thing off that table, move that off that table, clear off the um, fireplace mantle, and then just sit there and stare at it and think about it and go through some magazines and get, get some ideas and stuff. So just doing the moving the stuff out motivates you to keep going and actually change it because it's gone. And then you can go through your old stuff. You can go over to Ross or TJ Maxx or whatever. If there's a specific thing you want, um, do it. Or go to a junk store, uh, an antique store, you know, whatever you're looking for. Like this, there's, there's such a cool junk antique type store right down the street from me. I love going in there and just walking around. I don't usually buy much, but I love going in there because it just gets you thinking about it. So do that, you know, in preparation for redecorating your home or whatever. I also have to have a clean environment. Like I cannot sit here and write if my kitchen is a disaster over there. Kitchen has to be clean. The island has to be cleaned off. I don't know, that's just me. Some people work best in a messy environment. I guess some artists supposedly work really well in a messy environment. Um, that would not be me. Not that I'm an artist, but you know what I'm saying. 
Another one, big, is eliminate your distractions. A lot of times I will put my phone on airplane mode for like an hour while I write just so that I'm not distracted by it. Um, mainly, usually I don't even have my phone around. A lot of times when I open my computer, I put it on, there's some setting you can put it on where only your project shows, like only my book shows. Nothing dings, no notifications, nothing happens while I'm writing and that's really important. So eliminate your distractions. Uh, you know, if you're painting a room or doing some things, take, turn your phone off or put it on. You know, you can put it on, it's not sleep mode, but it's something like that. You can put it on that and then you can, not but you can also put, except for these favorites. This is on the iPhone. You can choose favorites. So I might turn everybody off but Scott because I know if there's an emergency and my kids don't get me or my parents don't get me, they'll call Scott. You know what I mean? So I can always use him as my person that I will answer his call because he never calls me during the day. He's too busy at work. Doesn't ever want to call and chat, <laughs> chat with me. So that's another way to eliminate distractions, but yet keep yourself available for emergencies. Something I do to set the stage for writing. Um, now, when I wrote Marie Antoinette, I, I played music a lot of times when I was writing certain really dramatic scenes. And I had this really dramatic um, score to that movie, um, New Moon, the vi vampire movie. Um, what's it called? Oh, my gosh. You know, the vampire movies. I can't think of them. But New Moon was the second one. Um and it's real dramatic. That movie's real dramatic because she's, you know, they're apart and they're trying to get together and everything. And so I used that score, which didn't have any words, while I was writing a lot of Marie Antoinette to, tr to put me in the mood. Now, if you're painting, put on some upbeat, peppy music. You know, if you're redecorating, put on whatever kind of music you love. When you really want to get something done is have a prize at the end something really good that, um, you know, I'm going to finish painting this room and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch X on TV and I'm going to have a glass of wine or I'm going to watch a Netflix show and have a glass of wine or, or a Coke, whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be alcohol. Um, but today I really don't want to write today. And part of my procrastination is doing this video. So I am as guilty as they come. I don't want to write today because it is beautiful outside. Now, later today, I have to go get groceries. My prize is I'm gonna to go to the beach and, and, and hang out for maybe 30 minutes to an hour because I haven't been in over a month and that's gonna be my prize and then I'm gonna grab my groceries and come home. So knowing that I get to do that, if I finish this as much writing as I plan to do today, you know, I plan to get to a certain point in my book, the end, so yeah, I got a big, a lot to do. If you wanna get a project done, you know, maybe there's some takeaway you had from this video. I really, really hope so. Good luck with your project. Go and do it. See you later, bye.